Hi guys, Bomber here. Welcome back to the channel. Here is a quick reminder of the rating system and while you read it, for those of you who don't know me, I am a master tier player and I do deck guides, gameplay at master tier and analysis like this one. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And with that said, let's jump into the review. The Holding Abyss is at 0 out of 5. Guys, I'm sorry if I'm ruining the party, but I don't have much faith in landmarks, or at least not the ones currently shown. This may be my biggest misjudgment, or Riot should hire me already. Anyway, jokes aside, this card is too slow, paying 7 mana for nothing basically, and it is true that you get really infinite amount of value, but you still need to pay mana for that. Comparing it to something like War Mother's Skull, which is true, it costs 5 more mana, but you get value immediately on board, and by the second turn, you more often than not got the mana spent back in terms of value given, and you are most of the time summoning bits units or leveled up champions, reducing the randomness given that you, since you built the deck in that way. The only hope could be putting it as a way at least for mid-range decks in a control matchup, uh, to have a chance in the late game, but I highly doubt that uh, it would be competitive anyway, too random for it to be consistent. On a side note, I hate randomness, it makes losses feel, make you feel more frustrated, wins feel less deserved, and overall takes away the skill out of the game, making it more similar to throwing dices, which is very boring. So, this is a huge no for me in terms of balance and design, and it is probably the first time that I am disappointed in Riot. Voices of the Old Ones is at 0 out of 5. So, best case scenario is that you skip the first two turns. You play Weirding Stones on turn 3, it survives, you are at 5 mana and 3 banked mana on turn 4, and you play this, so that you are at 8 mana on turn 5. So this card is insane, right? Well, first of all, you need exactly those two cards, and second of all, even if you do it, you're pretty much dead against an aggro. So maybe this goes more into a slow mid-range, where you maybe play something on the first turns, but still manage to bank 3 mana by turn 5, where you cast this to grab your finishers and get into the late game. But still, you would need to play suboptimally in the early game, and also skip a turn, which is kind of important, turn 5, where we switch from early game to mid game. So again, huge no on this card. Sneaky Zeebles is a 1 out of 5. Very weak cards in this batch of cards. This card is kinda clunky. It is an expensive elusive with a pretty bad stat line. If we compare it to something like the Ephemeral or the 5 mana 4 4 with a tune from Bilgewater, which are both much better in stat line, but I still don't see play. The play effect is also pretty awkward, a soon AoE on an elusive, but which most likely will target only a few things. If it was 3 attack instead of 2, it would have been much better, and will still probably be too weak. But I have faith in some Yasuo synergies or some other kind of archetypes, as this is a kind of unique effect. Crystal Ibex is a 4 out of 5. This is the only good card out of these cards. The stat line is great for 4 mana, and this has also an upside, and a pretty great one. This could see play in the well-known Lee Sin combo deck, as well as the Masia mid ranges which really lack overwhelm. This is a very solid card with a very desirable effect, there is no way this card does not get played at some point. Subscribe and let me know in the comments where do you agree and where you don't. That's it for this video, hope you like it and find it useful, and as always, see ya!